All right, I'm going to introduce Rudy, you. you got my videos, right? I, I no, not in time to put them in this. I couldn't. I, I no. Okay. No, yeah. Right. So that we're going to save those for next week. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, all right. I'm just going to download them. And we know. Yeah. All right. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Guys with Rides Virtual Car Show. And uh, I'm here with my uh, good friends, uh, Joe Picconi. If I'm saying that right, forgive me, Joe. Okay. Piconia. Piconia. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lou, our good friend Lou from the Guys with Rides Garage. Or Guys with Rides Garage, the Garage Mahal. I'm branding everything now. And uh, Nick <laughs> from the Garage Mahal as well. So, uh, guys, good morning. Good morning. And uh, I can't believe it, but this is our fifth show. So, uh, we've got, uh, I think, five or six cars ready to go, some of them live. Uh, um, we've got a couple door prizes, so we'll just keep going on the first one. You guys want to mention anything uh, before we get going? My wife said no. I have to thank you all for doing this. She misses high octane so much. Oh, and um, very good. This is this has just been wonderful, and we're very very grateful. And uh, the guys with rides and would like if there's any any events. Uh, and Joe's the one who suggested it that we can take some cars and uh, just do a drive by to thank either. Um, healthcare workers or somebody celebrating a birthday or yeah. graduations that aren't happening. And we could do that and we'll feature that on a future show. That's a great idea. I love the idea. If anybody needs a, us to do that in the tri-state area here, just reach out to us at email uh, at guyswithrides.com. I may need a, uh, a drive by in case I croak uh, soon because uh Two friends promised to take my ashes in one of those uh, Audi uh, racing purses. Have you ever seen them? They go around the Nurburgring. Oh, yeah. And I decided on taking the ashes around. I figured it'd be less weight. We'd get a better time. <laughs> you actually do all the things here. You get set. <laughs> and, 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 and it's closed right now. So I might have to settle for a drive-by. Oh, that's too <laughs> well, I don't make it to the Nurburgring. Well, we'll take a drive-by. The, I'll take you a uh, drive-by the garage mahal so you can finally see it in person. Yes, there you, you go. Know. <laughs> thank you all right so i'm gonna go ahead guys and i'm gonna start the video oh here we go and this first car up everyone is uh actually this car is available on the reserve parking it's one of about two dozen cars we have on our free reserve parking sp uh, section and uh, beautiful car i'm gonna let the owner john narrate it Tell me about the car, John. Well, it's a 65 Riviera. Okay. It's a first uh, first generation Riviera. Uh, designed by Bill, uh, Billy Mitchell. He also did the Corvettes that year. Uh, 84,000 miles on it. It's all original. When we were restoring the car, we pulled before we pulled the engine, we did a compression test on it. It's supposed to be 74 pounds. PSI per cylinder, the lowest cylinder was 72. Nice. So we didn't touch the internals at all, just regasket it okay. and plop her back in. So one uh, clarification on that, uh, John emailed me this morning, his mechanic who helped him with the engine, I watched the video and he said, uh, you forgot the one in front of the 70s. So uh, so for anybody out there who uh, knows these uh, nail heads, uh, he, he meant 172 and uh, 174. Awesome. Has a lot of weird options. It's got uh, vacuum trunk release. Got AM FM radio. It's got the rear, the rear seat speaker. It's got the fold down armrest in the back. Is the rear seat speaker reverb? No. Okay. That's another option you can get. <laughs> it's got the rosewood steering wheel. Okay. Tilt wheel. It's got the, uh, we'll show you when we get under the hood. It's got the uh, 
four note horns, which is a rare option. Oh, that's a nice. Look at that. And there they are. That's an option. It's a rare option, and they were hard to find. Wow, it's a nicely optioned car. Why did it tell you it's got the deluxe interior off? Okay. I had the uh, exhaust manifolds all ceramic coated because I got tired of looking at rusty exhaust manifolds. I don't blame you. So they're ceramic coated. They're guaranteed for life. Very nice. Power steering. Boy, that does make a difference. Okay, where it says 445 Wildcat. Right. A lot of car shows that people ask me, is it 445 cubic inch? Buick was always into putting the torque of the engine on the air cleaner. This is actually a 401. They call it a nail head engine. Because if you notice, the valve covers are flat. Right. And not on the ang not on the angles. Yeah. Which means you never got to worry about an oil leak out of the valve covers. Because there's none in them. <laughs> That's great. This is a California car because of this. Right, because of the PCV valve. That was a, no, PV, nope. it's got a PVC valve. Oh, that's the, what is that, the e, the air pump, or what is Well, it pulls air out of the valve cover back into the, because okay. it's got a PVC valve over here. Right, right. That was a California emissions for 65. Wow. Nice, nice. Put a glass bottle in here. That's actually concentrate. Right. And you pour that bottle into the reservoir and fill it up with water again and pour that in the reservoir. Now is that new old stock that you've got in such nice shape, or is that? The are you label still... is a reproduction. Okay. The bottles are original because they're the triangle. Wow. Do the honors. Fire that four-note horn for me. <laughs> That's a land yacht right there. That was a factory option. Factory option. So even though they had the two here, oh, so they made that. Those were the other two. Wow. Yeah, it's just got a, a jumper on the horn relay. That's hysterical. Wow. We'll show those. Nice. time. You know, it's the two, uh, two exhaust smokes on the car. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. I was accidentally, was accidentally on mute. So uh, just, uh, I'll just run that one more time. I was just saying, yeah, we should be okay now. I, somehow it accidentally went on mute. My bad. And uh, so I was just saying how straight the car was. This was a, a once a, a, a military pilot's uh, car brought from California to Texas and then made its way up here. And now you'll get to hear the horns one more time. Thanks for the heads up, Mike and Nurse Nancy. On the sound. The sound's all off. Yeah, accidentally muted, but we're back on. Okay, I, I don't hear anything. That's what I'm saying. You don't. Well, I can hear you. It's a little yeah, better. I, I, don't hear, I don't hear the sound from the video. Uh, I have There's the no sound, sound right now off. in the video. 
This okay. is all quiet right the now. The beautiful car would have been eligible over the right to comment. I would consider that to purchase. You guys can hear that, right? Yes. Okay, good. So, yeah, uh, Joe, I, I agree with you. Beautiful car. And um, um, I, I think it's just a – and, and John, was, I was very impressed with how knowledgeable he is on the cars. Uh, very passionate about it. So if you're uh, inter if you're out there and you're interested in the car, you can check it out um, along with all the other reserve parking cars we have out there. It's uh, guyswithrides.com forward slash reserve dash parking. So if you follow the newsletter that we do, I've been doing something called uh, Guess What Ride. And um, uh, the responses keep growing every week. I love it. And uh, so this week I took... Uh, pictures of some 70s Eldorados and the, the trick here was you had to order the order the pictures and pick the right one out of a multiple choice so the correct answer was uh, B C D A so uh, 72 74 78 or 76 and 76 is what I think I lost my 70 you know what I meant <laughs> so in in order we had about 80 percent of the people guess correctly and uh, so uh, out of that, uh, the, the winner is uh, David uh, Semenoff, and uh, I'm going to send an email out to him, and he's the uh, winner of the Adams Mystery Box. So uh, I'm going to look at putting another one up on Monday. I think uh, they're a big hit with everyone, so stay tuned for that, and we'll announce it in the newsletter and on the homepage of the website. Okay. Beautiful cars too. Yeah. They uh all right. So Joe, um we're gonna nice. go on to your Mike Cashin. Make sure we Mike Cashin. Yeah, I've got it in here. There yeah, it is. Mike Cashin. Mike Cashin high Mike Cashin South. like South Jersey. Oh, perfect. So. Mike Cashin like Lou is uh an extraordinarily gentleman. Uh and um I got to meet his grandson the day of the toy run. He's not only a big supporter and donates all the time and materials to uh, keeping uh, high octane photographed every Saturday morning. He's a major participant in our uh, toy run. And um, it's a big event in all of our lives every year. And I got to meet his grandson. And it was so refreshing to be able to see all of his quality, his generosity, his intelligence, his gentleness, two generations later. And uh, uh, he and, and Lou are people that we will go out of our way to uh, to go say hello to on Saturday mornings. And he did that picture. And I'm such a lousy photographer. I was very grateful. For <laughs> so thank you, Mike. And thank you for everything. Well, the car. Do you want me to talk about the car? wasn't too shabby. It has about the... These cars... Hi everyone, it's Joe Piconi again. Lou said he wanted a video of our 2004 Jaguar portfolio. There you go, go ahead. The car's got some dust on it. We, uh, it's Mother's Day, Happy Mom's Day. The ladies, we uh, took a ride. Uh, my thanks to Josh Pivak for getting us still another gorgeous gift. She put on her new earrings and said, take me for a ride. And we went up to a state park. So it's not as clean as it normally would be. These cars, they made 100 of them. And they were exactly the same. They also made a few, although they didn't sell those out. And something called Coronado Blue. This was Jaguar's first $100,000 plus car and it was a nine month wait for the vehicle to uh, get here. The, uh, they start with an, uh, an, an XKR, which many of you may be familiar with, and uh, they do a lot of things. Uh, the color is uh, Jupiter red. As you can see, it's just layer after layer of beautiful red and clear coat and uh, it's just magnificent. Uh, this car was delivered on Valentine's Day in 2004 and um, it looks just about the way it did when it came to us. It has about uh, 24,000 miles on it. Marie drove it for a while to work 
over a year, uh, really never in bad weather. And then she said, this is too nice a car to, uh, to be used for that. So she got herself something different. And this has been a kind of special uh, take a ride car uh, ever since. Now these are Detroit wheels. The manufacturer uh, was selling them uh, as a, uh, through SEMA, and uh, the set were $10,000. Uh, and we have uh, P0s on them, uh, narrower in the front than on the rear. The rear at the time, and perhaps still are, the widest uh, tire that you could get for a road car in this uh, country. The top is special also, it is known as matte black, and supposedly they have not used it on another car um, since uh, this uh, run was, uh, was finished. As always, our friend uh, Mr. Holman uh, gifted us a herald. He insisted that uh, there'd be something special on the car to mark it as ours. The, uh, you can see the additional chrome touches all the way through. Uh, and one of the things you could do in addition to extra security was to have the car tuned. They put a special super uh, charger on it and it generated um, some additional horsepower. The car was rated at 390. In, um, in Europe, they, uh, they quote brake horsepower. In the United States, uh, excuse me, in Europe, they quote the horsepower driving the wheels. In the United States, the manufacturers usually quote the um, uh, the uh, the brake horsepower, the higher the two numbers. Um, the supercharger um, takes uh, less horsepower, and with some other refinements, this was delivered with uh, 430 brake horsepower, 412 to the wheels, which wasn't too shabby uh, all those years ago. I still have the key in here, so let me take that off, and just like Mr. Leno would do, bring you inside. The dash is just really magnificent. It's um, it's a Brazilian hardwood, and there's molten bronze in the varnish that goes into the dash. And it has some interesting features. Um, there'd be a gla gauge cluster normally there, which was an option on an XKR. Uh, they put the uh, only available in, in this uh, limited production model. This is number 96 of 100, by the way um gps system in there and then you can bring up the gauges that used to be mechanical electronically in the center for that i think you can get a good view of the stitching uh and the little wood touches it's the uh, the best alpine stereo system they had at the time and you can see recaro racing seats there's a little bit of an area in the back molly fits in there nicely and I'll show you the the engine under the uh, the bonnet. This is a Momo steering wheel and a Momo uh, knob for the um, for the gear shift. And this is um, well, it was called at the time the famous Jaguar gated transmission. You can go up and down through the gears very easily uh, with this. And downshifting is a is a real treat. And uh, my young lady insists that we do it at every opportunity. Um, excuse me. So that's it. Recall racing interior. Jaguars never used one on another car. And you can see how much leather there is in this, uh, in this automobile. Uh, the car may be my wife's favorite. Now, this car is not one. You can see the smoke coming off. I've literally just shut it off a moment or two ago the um the uh this car and the classic uh thunderbird that i had uh, restored for her uh, were the only two cars that she wasn't involved in picking this car came on the valentine's day 2004 and as i said we waited nine months for the vehicle she was driving a roman bronze xkr uh, which we sold for a nice price. And uh, this came into our lives. It was delivered in a, um, in a closed container, a trailer, single car unit. 
And I was saying to myself, this kind of money and the car doesn't work. And it turns out that the Jaguar would not allow a car this pricey to be driven any distance. So that's how they delivered it. And we gave it to her and within five minutes she was off. Uh, when I was so sick that uh, they were giving me terminal dates, uh, we were looking for a good home uh, for it. And then I stabilized it. And I don't think she would... Uh, she would um, part with it very easily right now. Uh, it's pretty good on gas. Uh, it's got to be in the high 20s, except when you engage the supercharger. Um, again, being that quality supercharger, there's no lag whatsoever. And she'll often have me uh, hold back on the road and uh, kick the supercharger in. She calls it making it sing. And, uh, and off we go. Uh, there's a collector in California. He belongs to um, the same uh, Jaguar club that we do out in Coronado, the uh, Jaguar uh, uh, Club of San Diego. And um, it's interesting. We don't know him personally. He, he asked me some, some photos of the car because he wanted to buy one. And somebody had had a ruined XKR restored and tried to make it into a portfolio. And I sent him photographs. We talked. And he said... Um, it, it wasn't the real thing. And then he asked me, how about if I buy yours? <laughs> and I said, well, I really don't think it's for sale. And we kept in touch and he kept offering me more and more money. And um, I have been looking for a 612 and I finally found a Ferrari 612 that I, uh, Scaglietti, as it's pronounced in Italy, uh, one that I really wanted. And um, within two days, my wife said, I want to keep the portfolio. She says, buy the uh, Ferrari if you want. And uh, we have means to put one more garage back there, which I was trying to avoid. And um, the collector from California, beautiful. He had a, a, a red 120, a red 150 OTC. He had a uh, red E-type Roadster, a red E-type 2 plus 2 Cope. Um, he has my old XJS, which you may remember was a beautiful car, and he wanted this to complete the collection. He was one of the first people out there that died of the virus, and then it turned out that the 612 owner uh, also passed away. So oof, the car is still here, and I think she's going to keep it, and thank you for watching. All right. Joe, thank you. Appreciate that. Now... Can you explain? You. Can you explain this uh, sticker to me? Because I, I got schooled on this. I know Lou, you did send me the the thing. I'm going to show it on a screenshot next. But go ahead. Yeah, and I had. The, I actually, I had the. Well, let Joe go. But I actually had that. I have that, but I took it off from my uh, Mustang. Okay. I went through the same thing. <clears throat> One. Uh, it's always been an inside joke between my wife and I. That car comes with Brembo brakes, by the way. And she said, oh, good, I can go really fast, counting on being able to stop. I said, yeah, but I don't think very many people behind you are going to have Brembo brakes, so please be careful <laughs> with oh, it. true. <clears throat> the sticker, um, I think they had a program, and um, uh, it went away, and then uh, they came out with this, and the people from the Collector Car Insurance Company um, mentioned it to me. Uh, Holman, my dear friend, who's recently passed, always got all of our cars uh, inspected uh, for us. It's just part of their tremendous service. Uh, and this car is actually cared for at the BMW dealership. When Mr. Holman sold the Jaguar dealership, mm. he kept a service writer and a couple of technicians and the Jaguar customers became BMW customers. And I think this is the only Jag that they still uh, work on. Um, the sticker process was was interesting. Uh, I got the information, as I said, from the from ACI or Collect Car Insurance, and I contacted them. And surprisingly, they actually answered the phone. the The gentleman was official, uh, not officious by any uh, by any measure. He just matter of factly went down of all the rules, and he said to me at the very beginning of our conversation, "More than ninety nine percent of the people who think they have." collect the cars, go away disappointed. He said, but if you want to process the paperwork, and he told me everything that uh, I would need it, some of which I had to get because it was a fairly new car, 
to get collector car insurance at, mm. at, at that amount of money. Uh, the final sales price with all the tuning and the fees, but not the trans, uh, but not the taxes, was one hundred four thousand dollars for that car. Wow. Um, and we went through the process. We had to wait. I got letters from Jaguar. I got letters from uh, our Jaguar uh, Club of San Diego that we still belong to. And some other documentation. And the car has always been a very low mileage car. And um, uh, lo and behold, they granted me the sticker. It's five years and it's uh, no infection. So every five years I go, they take a look at the mileage. The car is 16 years old and only has 24,000 miles, just under 25,000 now. Uh, so we were, we were good with that. Now you had to avoid the, uh, the, uh, the inspection cycle. And... Um, uh, it sets the car apart as a true collector car. As, as I said, the gentleman notified me. That, uh, in fact, he said the form letter that you will get if you're rejected will make it clear that we can consider it a collector car. Okay. Neat. <laughs> Which I thought was uh, was was funny. So I go down there to get the sticker, and uh, 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 I had to go up to uh, I guess it's Medford to the motor vehicle agency and wait in line. And those folks kept trying to tell me who had to go run to me. And I said, look, I don't really know anything about what I mean. And finally, somebody came in. I, I had a, it was cold. I had a Navy flight jacket. And I said, you're in the service. And I said, yes, yes, come here. I'll take care of you. Uh, and they gave me the form. I paid the fee. And then I took it down to the inspection station in, uh, I guess it's Penn Salkin. And they had never seen one before. But the gentleman who was the supervisor on duty had been an enlisted person in the Navy. He said, we're going to make this work for you. So he actually got on the phone with Trent and uh, they worked it out and uh, they got me a sticker and we put <laughs> it on and, uh, and that's it. So it's the triangle for a collector car. It's for a car that's um, newer than 25 years yeah. old. And um, that was the measure that you had to, to, to uh, the test that you had to pass in order for it to qualify as a collector car. Very cool. And that's this thing. Thank Very you. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, uh Alec program has, program has gotten a lot better than it was back in, uh, early two thousands. Is that right? Back then. It, yeah. It was just, it was your regular sticker and they put a little sticker next to it. And you had to, instead of going inspection every year, you have to go every two years. You could, and you had okay. to show it's a limited production vehicle. You have to have uh, a, a cover page from your insurance. So there was insurance like insured like that, like a limited, limited use. And it was inspection every two years instead of every year. And the guy would come out and check your miles. You couldn't do more than 3,000 miles a year. Yeah. I, so maybe it's worth while. Yeah, I, I, it was, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't impressed with the whole thing and going in. And I actually didn't like the guy who just inspected the, the car. Huh. So I went back to a regular one. <laughs> and uh, now now inspection is every two years, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, fine. Oh, every they five. No, 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 but for a regular car inspection. Yeah, right. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's every two or for Yes, regular. I guess. Again, I don't know. They do it as part of the service for me. Yeah. yeah five, if you buy a new car, so, it's five now, years and then every two after that. Ever two after that, yep. so I you know it's maybe it's worthwhile looking into again. I still have all the paperwork. Well, so our new i8 it. and our uh, almost new uh cabriolet, it's five years, right? Uh, inspection on a new car, we don't, right? Yeah, first, first yeah. five, <clears throat> so well, I five years, I may not have to worry about that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, good. So, uh, so that's the uh, that's the Jag. It's, we've had six Jaguars and um. We've loved them all. Uh, two sedans, a Vaden Plus and a custom XJR. Mr. Holman and I had twin XJRs in silver with a charcoal interior and burgundy panels. So it was wow. a really beautiful wow. car. And uh, the XJS and the three uh, XK types. Very nice. So Thank you. So uh, uh, Mike G on Staten Island says thank you for your service. My dad was a World War II oh. Navy veteran as well. Well, so, but thank you for your service. And uh, Alan Zambrano. Privilege, privilege and pleasure. And uh, Alan Zambrano, Zambrano asks, what's the color on the Jag? I, I know you mentioned it, but maybe. You... Uh, yeah, it's uh, Jupiter red. They use that color for only those 100 cars. And uh, the top was also a single uh, use uh, construction. It's a, a matte black top. It's um, You have to see it next to a, a more traditional black uh, top to. Uh, you appreciate it. Okay. Hey, hey, Lou, can you mute your mic? Uh, 
certainly try. Okay. So we get to look at my mug and the lucky Porsche can. So on um, the newsletter, on the website, um, and uh, a couple places on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram, if you belong there, I do have an invitation where we send out where you can um, register for some door prizes. So uh, if you see the guys uh, have the guys with rides, this first door prize, we're going to raffle off. I've got some stickers. We'll send you a care package. You get the limited edition iridescent sticker along with the magnets. Um, the guys with rights magnet, as you can see, I've got it back here. One of these. So I'll give you a nice uh, swag bag. Probably about, uh, I don't know, if with but that, you just uh, we'll email you. You get the T-shirt size. You'll get a nice T-shirt as well. And uh, it's probably about a $60 value uh, in free guys with rights merch. So. All right, so everybody that registered, you got to register every week. I don't do anything else with the emails other than to put them in this can. So, uh, and uh, so out of this, I just picked out, let me do that again. Let's see who the lucky winner is for this first one of a swag bag. And that is Ed Svoboda. So, Ed, if you're out there listening right now, I will send an email out to you. Get your T-shirt size, and we'll get that. Uh, we'll get your delivery address, and we'll get you the swag bag out. So, all right, now we'll keep going. And uh, all right, Jim. So we're rolling. Tell me about. Nine forty-four. So here's a eighty-seven nine forty-four. It's got uh, seventy thousand miles on it, and uh, as you can see, it's in pretty good shape. Uh huh. I uh, I got it about eight years ago after uh, I had another nine forty-four. That the lady didn't like the way it looked, so she rearranged it for me on uh, on my way home one day. Oh. And totaled it. So uh, my son and I picked this up, and uh, most of the panels were all whited out. You know, but with single stage paint, you can rub it out. So uh -huh. that's what we did. And little by little, did a couple things here and there. You know, change the overhead cam belt and the timing belt and the water pump. And just recently, just resealed the uh, oil core last week. But as you can see, it's in good shape, man. And it yeah. drives like it's brand new. And Very it's nice. Like a skateboard with the. The way it goes Good. around the corner. And is this your only Porsche, or what else you got? No, I got a I got a, uh, a 2017 911 twin turbo. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, uh, my wife's got a nice Mercedes. She just got a new Mercedes. So <laughs> you got to keep them happy. Got to have got everybody happy at the family. And and uh, do you and your son track the car at all, or is no, it strictly no Concours? We're just we're just drive. Nice. We're just car enthusiasts. My yeah. son, my wife, and my. Uh, and we get around, you know. We got we started Cars and Coffee with a bunch of other guys. And, and which Cars and Coffee is that? The Cars and Coffee over in Mount Laurel, South South high, Jersey. Uh, high yeah. Octane, South Jersey. Yeah, I'm just getting you to say it. <laughs> yeah. So good. All right, and then uh, moving on. So, um, I think Dr. Alberts. I just saw uh, on loose camera that uh, he's also there with another car. And uh, we're going to do live. So there's always surprises going on. But I'm okay. going to let him talk through. Uh, this is his, He's the original owner of this Radwood era 95 um, Lincoln Continental. Excuse me, Lincoln Town Car. So tell me about this car. Oh. Well, it's a 1995. 
All right, Radwood era. Uh, Lincoln Town Car. It's a uh, the upgraded tournament edition. Uh, showroom new, bought it in uh, 95. And it was scheduled for stretch because the undercarriage is all heavy duty. But they decided not to stretch it, it went up for sale, and as I said, it was on the, um, <clears throat> the showroom floor. And uh, it has all the upgraded features as a heavier undercarriage. Uh, for a full stretch. Nice. It has all the amenities inside, power, everything, remote mirrors, mirrors are heated. It has a turning resistance control on the steering wheel, adjustable seats. Now what's seats. what's turning resistance control? Uh, you can set the resistance on the wheel as a turning. Oh wow. Yeah, so as a turning uh, uh, resistance turn control. Has heated seat, uh, not heated seats, has a power seats, of course, and it has a memory and remote. And um, it's dual exhaust. It's got the large V8 because it's for a limo. Wow. It's all original, it's 100% original inside, has 180,000 miles on it. Which is a good start for these Panthers. Yeah, the oil gets changed every 3,500 miles. And. Um, has uh, aftermarket applications with the chrome chrome edition. That's a beauty. Yeah. And the wheel wheel rims. Yep. It has nice. a brand new. Uh, this is the third vinyl top. On it. This is not the original. The wow. Vinyl top. I believe it. And uh, you look inside. Okay. So Joe, we're going to come back to you. Okay, I, I, I had to split because I was, uh, losing, I was uh, losing power. Okay, so we're getting a little feedback loop, so one of them... Uh... I got the sounds sounds off, and I'm on my uh, uh, earphones. Okay. Um, there you go. I, okay. That should be better. Yeah, much better. All right. So um, for everyone... What we're going to do next, little surprise, is uh, so uh, Dr. Dr. Albert there uh, has shown up and he's got a uh, an older three series convertible. But now you're going to see one of Joe's. It's a 2019, correct, Joe? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show this off, and this is the hard top cap relay. So Joe, take it from there. You want to describe it? Uh, this is uh, another interesting story. Uh, Mr. Holman sold at auction our XJS and an old two-seat Thunderbird. Um, uh, the XJS was, was a really beautiful and comfortable car, but it was getting old. And in my condition, I wanted her to not have to worry about old cars. Mm. So she decided on one of these. Um, the Series two is smaller and faster, but we wanted something that we could provide an open top experience uh, for our grandchildren. And uh, she thought this was perfect. So they searched all over uh, for a 2018. I thought there might be a leftover because it was still early in the year and nothing uh, that uh, uh, that pleased her. And uh, so she started to look, and this ends up to make a long story short. This ends up to be a uh, a special order pre-production model. Was the first to come in the country. Wow! Now, it, as I said on the video, you may have heard this already. Fifty years ago, I made the mistake of saying, "Sure, we picked the builder." I said, "Work with the builder, build the house, do what you want," which is a horrible mistake. If any younger men are listening, you really don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, being a slow learner, I did exactly the same thing with this car. <laughs> so this car ends up having every option that BMW uh, made uh, for the uh, for the model year. And as a friend of mine said from high octane, it, it's really uh, two cars. It looks completely different as a coupe than it does as a uh, as a convertible. Mm -hmm. uh, the top weighs some 400 pounds. In fact, wow. in the video, I'm kind of stumbling around because I couldn't make the top work. You got to lock it before you can automatically make the top go down, which I, I should know by now. And um, well, that, there go the they're, windows. They're, they're right there. I, I love it already because it, it just looks like a great classic hard top in that mode. 
Yeah, and then and then four hundred pounds uh, tucks wow. down into the uh, uh, into the uh, into the boot. Uh, and unlike every other convertible I had, this one's really hard to do manually if it fails. You need two people, but it is possible to do. Wow. And uh, there's just so many things in this car that could be standard. For example, there's two rear head headrests uh, are rollover protection. And right. they told me never stand over those because the charge won't go. And it really keeps the car from, uh, from, uh, from crushing. The paint. The reason we ended up with a special order car is that um, the M's were not going to be available for a while. And originally they were going to be in uh, two really nice colors, a blue. And uh, I think they called it meringue. Uh, and they came with black wheels and a black interior. She said, well, I don't like that. And then she saw this color and they said, that's a special vehicle only color. And it's significantly more money. It's called Sunset Orange Metallic which really makes the car. It's the reason why we ended up with a white I-8 rather than the beautiful orange I-8 that they offer because she said, I already have orange. Yeah, gorgeous color. So the color, it led to the special interior, which is called uh, Dove. Uh, of course, she doesn't care if it does get dirty. She has me. She's like a uh, an antebellum um, uh, Southern uh, a woman who brought their own help with them, so to speak. <laughs> and and I, I'm the help. So uh, we got the Dove interior, and you can see the surprisingly effective um, windscreen uh, there. It, uh, if it's a windy day, we put the windows up. We put the neck warmers on, which this car because it, this car is equipped with everything. It's got back warmers, the seat cushion warmers, wow. and of course they cool. And then they made me a bolster that fits over the hump in the back seat. And uh, it's the same material and it makes a smooth service for Molly, our golden retriever. And there's a latch that they put in for me and it connects to her safety vest. So she sits back there with her goggles and, uh, and her Explorer hat. And uh, I go out uh, with my, uh, with my girls. Very nice. Um, the, uh, the car in order to get the performance that she wanted, uh, uh, it's, it's got a European spec engine because that's what they were building when this car was purchased. They weren't doing cars for this market. Hmm. That's when I found out that they schedule these cars and they do this, that, and the other together. And then something else, uh, uh, at another time, uh, it took them six, six weeks being Teutonic, very German. They had the car ready just about the time that it was uh, supposed to come. And, um, it has all the performance features in it. The, uh, the, uh, performance steering suspension and um um the transmission uh, it also has a, a dual clutch and uh a dry sump well we don't have those on any other cars uh even the uh, the i8 with the electric engine is a completely different experience and the car adjusts magnificently the the jaguar which you just saw has something called computer assisted tuned suspension which keeps that car absolutely flat this car adjusts magnificently. If you're uh, putting the top down, you can be going just under 30 miles an hour, about 45 kilometers, and uh, the top will still work. Wow. Uh, you can feel the car adjust to accommodate the weight that has just been placed over the rear wheel so that you don't have <laughs> oversteer. Wow. And as I said, it does everything. It, it tells you when cars are going to pass. It's got really neat cameras that peer around corners. It parks herself, and to be honest with you, we have not tried the parking yourself um, uh, aspect of the uh, uh, of the car yet. You can't do it with cones. It really has to recognize something that looks like two <laughs> automobiles, and I haven't found two volunteers yeah. for her to try that. Uh, you can just see how the color comes up. It's plastic, of course. It's it's not much chrome on it, but it, it does uh, accent uh, very well. And then the other thing were the wheels. Of course, if she's buying everything else that was extra cost, she had to have gray on gray wheels. And I don't know why they uh, are more money, but uh, but they were. <laughs> uh, that shot by the mirror, you can see how it, the, the turn signal uh, goes out. It's terrific on gasoline. We went to at Cyan yesterday, which has got to be at least 40 miles. We live on the east side of Cherry Hill. And uh, we had just above... Um, 
uh, a half tank of gas and we came back with a half tank of gas. It's got nine gallons and it's telling me it's got 336 mile range yeah. on it. And it's not a hybrid. It's, it's pure electric. Right. Like our i8, we never use Echo Pro. Uh, we drive it in comfort mode, which is very responsive until the oil uh, temperature heats up. And then we drive it in performance mode, especially if it's my wife. This car also has track day setting. And BMW, being very accommodating, put a non, what I'll call a non-apparent uh, command between um, performance and track day because I didn't want her to accidentally stumble into shutting off all the, uh, the safety features. Yeah. We did it once one day. She decided that she wanted to drift. She actually watched <laughs> watches drift racing on, on, on television. Huh. Uh, and, uh, we did some sliding with it and then, uh, we pulled over what you have to do to get it out of a uh, track day setting and, uh, and put it back into uh, performance. We love, we take it down the shore. We can really use it as a daily driver. It doesn't have very many miles on it. You can see with the top down, there's only room for my cane, right. uh, back there. But with the top up, we carry, we carry all the gifts for the uh, for the grandchildren and it's it's really not a problem nice and the grandkids and my wife like to see the top go uh up and down i yeah i think that about uh, covers it so it uh it uh took six weeks to finish then they put it on a ship and they called her and said um it was the motor vehicle nancy i think motor vessel uh, nancy and it went from Kiel to Hamburg and to Utrecht and Southampton. And every day I had to call up the chart and show her where her ship was. Wow. And it was a winter time. A couple went down in storms and took all the cars with them. Oof. Fortunately, this made it to Halifax and then Newark. And Newark, we never noticed this before because we weren't actually involved. You can't get the car right into work. They do one when they went. And Mr. Holman sent a single car carrier and some paperwork, and they released the car, and uh, and it uh, and it came to us because we had given them, those other two cars, as I said, were uh, at sold auction. So we we had uh, a hole in the garage, and then this uh, this filled it very nicely. <laughs> so that's the car. Very nice, Joe. Thank you very much for both thank of them you. today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, this forward here a little bit. Okay. So Lou is, I know we've got some live guests. So uh, Lou, if you're listening, do you want to uh, unmute and show us who uh, showed up at the Garage Mahal? Yes. Um Dr. Talone showed back up with his 2001 BMW 325CI convertible to compare with Joe's convertible. Okay. And this is a uh, soft top car. Uh, Dr. Sloan, would you be kind enough to show how the top goes down on this car? Sure, Lou. Video okay? Yeah, it's working great. This is a uh, soft top car. Oh. Uh, Dr. Slow, would you be kind enough to show how the top goes down on this car? Sure, Lou. Um, Video okay? Yeah, it's working great. This is a uh, soft top car. Yeah. Oh. Can, uh, uh, yeah. Dr. Slow, would you be kind enough to show how the top goes down on this car? Sure, Lou. Um, Hey Joe, can you mute your uh, can you mute your microphone, Joe? I will uh, disconnect and just enjoy the show. Very Thanks good. for having me on. Absolutely, we'll thank you. you. Week. Appreciate it. We'll take a look at the interior. Oh, very nice. This car, Dr. Talone says, weighs close to uh, two tons. He, he refers to it as a uh, BMW Panzer. <laughs> from the way, from, because of its uh, its weight, he says the handling is, is excellent on it. There's um, no body flex. Yeah, these are tanks.
It's a 19 year old car. Unbelievable. Yeah, that looks stunning. And, um, but behind this car, the gentleman that I know has a garage. He's probably has the Guinness record for the number of Corvairs oh, in his car. Look at that. Always, his garage. always a surprise on the virtual car show here. <laughs> always a surprise. This is the uh, American Porsche. This is, uh, I'm going to pan over to Glenn. Glenn is the proud owner of this and many other uh, cars. I'm going to move closer to Glenn. I'm masked, so I'm okay for anybody who's watching. Okay. And I'm going to let uh, Glenn do some narration. Tell us about tell us about uh, Corvairs. Tell us about this one. Well, I've had Corvairs since I've been 16 years old. My brother drank for $16 that had an engine fire in it, and we got that going. Uh, and actually used it quite a bit to go to work on, uh, make money so I could buy uh, parts and things for my 66 GTO. So that's where the core of airs came from. And, um, but I've had, I don't know how many of them, uh, but this guy right here is actually my wife's car. And I uh, fixed it up for her in like 1992. That's about how old the paint is on that. And she had always bugged me that I had my cars that I'd take to the shows. And most of them were just kind of, pretty nice drivers and things and she always complained that we never won any awards well i fixed her i says i'm going to get you one yourself and here i fixed this one up for her back then and uh she's taken it and gone to it's actually gone to hershey and it's got its uh aaca junior a few years back now but uh nice she just her little uh it's just her little car that she just I'm surprised she's letting me drive it here because I, uh, <laughs> you know, I get I get it dirty and, and I'm smoking a cigar in it. And she's she's this on video. She's gonna have a cow that I had my uh, uh, Romeo and Julietta lit inside this thing here. So, uh, what color? Do you know what color this is? Yes, it's uh, I believe it's a one year only uh, color that GM had. They painted everything. It was uh, Aztec bronze, wow. and uh, but the. Uh, it's, it was repainted, uh, like they say, back in 92. But this car is, I know the whole history from it when it left the, uh, uh, I guess, Willow Run. Uh, American Corvair Parts guy down in, uh, I think it was North Carolina originally had this for quite some time and sold it to another guy, this Bill Haney guy. He actually had it. It was a trailer queen for quite a few years. And uh, he had this car airbrushed on the side of his uh, uh, Hallmark trailer and pictures of his dogs and everything and things like that. There's a pretty funny stories about that, but um, this car has been around. I know everybody that's ever owned it. Uh, one guy that actually had it is uh, that I got it from. He was one of the first guys to make a V8 Corvair. He actually had a Buick 215 V8 in the back of one. Wow. And he had this one. And, uh, but this, uh, my wife liked it. it. And the big reason why she liked it, it's air conditioning. Air, and it's a four-door hardtop. Yeah. Wow, yeah. four door hard, uh, with air. Let's take a yeah. take a look at the interior on uh, on this. All, uh... Red on red, huh? Yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike G. I, I, I is saying uh, his sister had a two door '66 Corvair, and then uh, uh, his his sister's Corvair was that color. Uh, and uh, he also had a 66 uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass convertible that color. Interesting how uh, small world it is. Now, this is where I'm interested to see how, how they fed the compressor yeah, off this of this belt. This, look at the size of the uh, GM compressor. Standard size. Wow. Well, from what I understand, it, ha it has dished pistons in it, so you uh, won't fish yourself out of it. It's the same compressor used on the full size of pals and Cadillacs and everything. But this one supposedly, I think they somebody told me it has a, a slightly less cubic inches or something in that compressor to yeah. let you be hanging uh, meat or something. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. That's the belt. That's the famous uh, Corvair belt that's uh, a lot of people uh, you know, uh, have problems with. But in the later ones, they actually added a couple of guides to it and things. And, uh, Probably the belt technology uh, came uh, yeah, improved quite a bit since. Uh, but this is like a single belt, right? Yes, that runs. Yeah, 
It's the original serpentine belt. Right. right I was yeah. going to say, this is a serpentine belt. It's not new. It goes back at least to yeah, Black 66. A, a two, now, the two-axis uh, uh, serpentine this belt. This, this uh, and, and notice that the inside is <laughs> it's insulated of the, uh, oh, of the rear hatch. Oh. Wow! Keep the heat in. Yeah, <laughs> heat in. that is one. That is one hot rear trunk right there. When you're running the air, <laughs> I'm sure. It is. I'll, I'll, I'll actually. Now we're going to see the front, right? Okay. This was the first front. Yeah. <laughs> like... There's there's picture. Uh, I believe there's some uh, episode on. Oh, look, oh, I gotta hold on. Let me make sure everybody can see how you where the lock. Is. I believe there's an episode on Bewitch that that uh, that Lady Kravitz across the street was looking at uh, Samantha taking the groceries out of the front end of her Corvair on the Bewitch show there, and uh, is uh, you know telling her husband there's something wrong with them that they're taking the groceries <laughs> out of the engine. Nice uh, nice product placement there, Chevrolet. <laughs> yeah nice nice so i keep hearing somebody's uh, text message thing going off that's you lou yeah i don't have my phone here yeah your phone's sitting on the desk over here sorry oh, is that where is that where it's coming from from my phone yes room? it's your phone yes go turn the volume down please hmm this so interesting is. sidebar here. Mike G's uh, uh, from Staten Island's telling, you had to watch your fingers with that fan. My shop teacher, Mr. B, at Tottenville High School, lost his finger on a Corvair. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Don't don't leave your shop. Right this is uh, this is the size of the BMW trunk with the top down. I know that Joe in his uh, video was saying that uh, he doesn't have much trunk space on yeah. the new one. Yeah, with the hard top. And yeah, this one definitely has a lot of space. Yeah, what's interesting, I I, I read it somewhere. One of the automotive uh, um, sources, uh, the next uh, the next convertible that BMW is doing, they are reverting back to a soft top. If I read it right, there you go. It was so here's the uh, three twenty five power plant. Nice. And there's a BMW advertising. <laughs> <laughs> no, no mistaking it there. Somebody didn't know. They they might think it's a it's more than a four cylinder. Right. And uh, you can check their belt setup compared to the Corvair, but no, you can't. <laughs> you can't even see. Uh, you can't going back to ninety one. You can't see. Here's what you can see. This is what they let you see. Right. So they give you this that you can see. Yeah. Then they give you um, this is your your this your radiator over here down here. So you can see that, and uh, up here is your brake, but and then uh, I think you have a dipstick here. I don't see. I'm looking for a trans dipstick. It might be sealed I for life. That uh, 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 is that an automatic or? I don't see I'm... automatic. Yeah, so that's probably a sealed for life unit already. Back then. Oh, the, no, you don't see. So you don't. Uh, so you don't add anything no, to it. No, no. I've seen plenty. I've seen. So if you have a transmission leak, you're in trouble. Right. You. Um... Well, like give you an idea, the Cayenne we've got, um, there's no no dipstick on it. You have to fill it from underneath the car. It's a it's a very convoluted process. You have to, um, well, what you have to do is have it up on a lift. You have a special tool. I've got one where you pump the fuel it in, and you have to do it in three different uh, stages, if I recall. Uh, and you have to take one like an infrared thermometer. And do it at those things, uh, those those temperature levels, so that it gets the enough fluid in it, and that's the only way you can fill it, and and that's the only way you know that when it uh, when it seeps out, that's when you know it's filled at that temperature. So, yep. All right, Lou. I'll get your video back. I just, there we go. I stepped, I stepped a little bit too far. 
yeah, stuff a little bit too far out of range. I don't know what now, so there's Dr. Stallone in all his glory, and you have uh, you have some <laughs> Kansas City Chief scarf on. Uh, yes. Why? Because of the uh, uh, the former Super coach. Bowl champ. Super Bowl champ. So Dr. Stallone, you're a front runner. Yeah. Band, bandwagon. <laughs> I look I look forward to the Bills playing them this year. I look forward to that. <laughs> Let me see Glenn. Let me get him so see Glenn. Glenn, let's go let's go into the shade a little bit over here. Because Glenn is gonna I want Glenn to tell us. I'm gonna go to the front camera. And um front camera. So let's make sure the front camera's here. And we're here. Do it. So you see Glenn on. We do. Glenn, tell us about uh, first, Glenn. Glenn's. I was surprised because he uh, he was talking about bringing his uh, sixty six GTO. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have a problem getting GTOs here. Isn't that right, Rudy? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go get it. It's <laughs> well, we have another Saturday. We have more Saturday. We'll actually, get here real quick. We'll save it for another day. But he's got a sixty six GTO. Another day. Yes. He has a core eight. Yes. The, the crown. Yeah, if you look at your old these back up uh, breaking up. Break it. All right, let's go. Okay, we're right underneath the Wi Fi. Okay. I think once you sit down, uh all right. Go ahead, try it. Core eight. There's a break. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's see like this. Testing, testing. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Talk. Talk. All right. Yeah. Well, do you want to hear about the G? Core eight. Oh, the core eight. Okay. Oh, that was uh, in 1973. A uh, friend of mine, five Corvair that he had blown me in. We had been, of course, with the subscribers to Hot Rod Magazine. And in the back of Hot Rod, they ran an ad, Crown Manufacturing, for put a V8 in your Corvair. And, and he had the money to do it, and I helped him do it. And, and we put a Chevy V8 in the back of the Corvair. And uh, uh, he got married, wound up with three kids. Uh, he was living at his mom's house there at the time. His mom said that, you know, if he goes and moves out, the car's going to go. I wound up with it. And I've had it since, oh my goodness, it's probably 1980 something. And uh, I've actually got it all sorted out. And it's been to Pocono and Lime Rock on two or three occasions. And uh, I've actually uh, had some pretty high speed fun with the thing. And I'm here to tell you all about it. And you still survived that. And uh, you have uh, a couple other Corvairs, and if you have it in your garage, uh, yes, yes. I, I was going to try to bring. Uh, I have a '65 turbocharged convertible. Wow! And right now the carburetor's acting a little funny on it. It's understandable. Look, the, the carburetor design. I think on the rebuild kit says it's for '53 or something. Uh, uh, Hudson and the uh, it's the same carburetor they used on the '53 to '54 uh, Corvette or something like that. Huh. And, uh, but I'll get that here next weekend. Good. Hopefully. So we're going to, we have some, Glenn's going to show some cars and maybe I'm asking him, maybe we can uh, get into the garage and just do a, a video and then, the and then he could do the talk over on it. Yeah. That, I think that would, you know, we're going to, it's looking like uh, we're at the top of the hour already, if you can believe it. All right. Yeah. So that was a quick hour. It I was. Hope everybody it was. enjoyed the show. So uh, I thank you, Glenn, for coming, Dr. Talone. Thank you very much for uh, there he is. Wave goodbye, Dr. Talone. The Lincoln, the Lincoln car. Uh, hopefully, one day I'll be able to turn into a low rider, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll drop it right down on the ground. We'll black out all the chrome. Tell them where we are. We are at the garage, Mahal. We're at Big Lou. Garage, Mahal. Dusty Hine. Jay Leno and <laughs> <Blue>. <laughs> thank you very much. Over, and out. Over to Rudy. All right, guys. So thank, thank you. you. Um, Thanks to Jim uh, Jim uh, Hill, um, Joe Pagonia, of course, and Marie Her Highness, and uh, I got to say hello to Clarence and to Rick. 
and that's about it. Well, I appreciate that. So I appreciate everybody doing that as well. Joe, thanks for doing all the video. Uh, look forward to Glenn and uh, Albert. Thank you for showing your cars as well. Um, so oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So um, if you're you want to know anything about the car, no. <laughs> I'll tell them about it when I own it. Okay, good. <laughs> you got to get in line. Got too many so, uh, what, are your cleaning ladies going to get your car again? Everybody, everybody, and everybody wants that car. I can't drive it anyway. I, I got first dibs. I said, <laughs> you about 19 other people. Oh. They all say that to me. Okay. So, there we go. All right. Um, so, if you're out there and you uh, have an interest in showing your car or your garage, uh, e email me at email, or uh, you can just send it to Rudy at guyswithrides.com. And uh, we'll get you set up. Uh, since we're still practicing social distancing, uh, I can walk you through, uh, send you an instruction sheet on how to film the car. But basically what you're seeing is uh, people just using their iPhone. And um, uh, the preferred way is you just go around and uh, uh, video the car. And then we uh, have you uh, zoom, join our Zoom call like you see and uh, narrate it. So uh, I'd love to have, uh, have you on. We need about five to ten minutes of video and we go from there. So the last thing is, um, as you can see behind me, is uh, the Car Care Specialties, our uh, great sponsor, Frank Wainhig at the uh, Car Care Specialties. So, um, hey, hey, Lou, can you uh, mute your microphone? Awesome, thank you. So um, I'm going to pick out of the trusty oil can. Again, uh, if you uh, want to be in on the door prize, just uh, register. Um, either on the website or uh, if, you, if you subscribe to our newsletter. We don't do anything with those emails other than put them in the can to be drawn. So I picked a name. This is for the $50 gift certificate with Car Care Specialties. And, uh, oh, Conchetta Raffinello, you are the winner of the $50 gift certificate. So thank you for uh, uh, participating, Conchetta. And... Uh, We'll get that emailed out to you, and uh, you can buy uh, some detailing supplies for uh, for your favorite ride. So, uh, Nick, thanks for apologize that we didn't get to your uh, your cars, but we've got the video queued up for the next time. Yeah, there's always next week. There's thanks, always, Rudy. Yeah, thank you. For, Great show today. Yeah, thank you everyone for uh, uh, chipping in and doing this. And uh, uh, looks like we're getting closer to. Uh, uh, being phased in depending on where you are, but it uh, looks like we're going to keep doing these for a few more weeks uh, until we can actually uh, meet together. So stay safe. If you have any questions, uh, by all means, check out the website. Uh, you can contact me there, and I uh, would love to have your car or and or garage on the show as well. So have a great week, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.